Now that comes from the back end as well. When you know your goaltender is strong, is motivated, is making the big save, that just allows you to play much more aggressively up front and keep pinching those D down, which is when Vancouver's at their best. This is one of the few times in this game so far where we've seen the teams go head to head, top lines. Jonathan Taves against the Sedins. And now we got Marion Host on the right side instead of Pat Kane. And Brian Bickle is still there. So some adjustments or is Kane hurt? Maybe an equipment problem? Maybe just an adjustment by Joel Quinville here in the dying seconds of the first period. Well, you talked about that Red Wing influence and none bigger than Marion Hosa, but here comes Kane and he's gonna take Bickle off. He motions to Hosa, so great job. A minute, an offensive zone face-off. Joel Quinville going for an offensive push here to try to tie it up at the end of the first. Nice luxury to have to be able to load up a line like this. Kane, Taves, and Hosa on the ice. One minute. Pavel Dimitra, the Vancouver's third line out here with Ryan Kester to take the draw. Kyle Wellwood gets to center, dumps the puck in. Vancouver just want to play safe through this last minute and get to the dressing room with the lead. And this is the right end to play safe in. Kyle Wellwood, Alex Hedler, his pass into the corner for Dimitrix skipped on him coming off the boards. And the Blackhawks will break out, but Taves misfired on a pass. Seabrook to center, a tip in by Hosa ends his shift. It speaks volumes about the confidence that Alain Vigneault has on that Wellwood line, though, eh? to keep them yeah. on in the dying seconds of the first period, a one-goal lead, and lets him go up against the top line. One of the things you've seen with Vigneault is that he he's really trusts his team now, and he's not worried too much about matchups. Here's Mason Raymond with a shot. He scores! A big rebound from Mason Raymond. He created the first goal. He scores the second one. 2-0 Canucks with 11 seconds to go in the first. And Jim, this is one that Antti Niemi is just very upset at himself. We saw earlier the Kessler-Raymond chance. It was a loose rebound. This is an easy rebound where he just loses control. A shot from the corner. And look at this nice juicy rebound right out past his defenseman. Brent Sopel and a heads up play by Raymond and this is a shot that you got to put up and over the goaltender otherwise he's there to make the save and you mentioned this line's offense not not evident in round one but boy what a first period on the road for the Kessler line and especially for Mason Raymond who has a goal and an assist and what a huge goal that is with just 11 seconds to go in the period at 1949 of the first Mason Raymond. You know, Jim Butlin only had a couple of opportunities to set up camp in front of Luongo in the first period, and Luongo looked unfazed. I would think you want to deal with Dustin Bufflin uh, in the manner the Canucks did in the first period, which is make him play off the rush. Don't let him get set up. Make him get into a skating game. He's a big man who might not be as quick as the Canucks. No, and that means staying out of the penalty box. And that's really the opportunity he gets on that power play with Kane and Taves. So the second period begins with Vancouver in the lead, two to nothing, Mason Raymond with that late goal with 11 seconds to go in the first period. And he turns things over to the Sedins and Michael Samuelson to start this second period against Kane, Taves, and Brian Bickle, and here's a two on one. Samuelson turns and has control, he passes off, Salo shoots, that's a ricochet off a body in front, backhand shot, Daniel is stopped by Niemi, another shot, they score, Henrik Sedin on the third chance, and Vancouver gets an early one to go at the late first period goal, 3 nothing Canucks. Well, you see Jonathan Taves down there. He got hit in the ankle with that slap shot, and that's why he wasn't able to make any play defensively. Good curl back here by Samuelson. Right there, he gets hit, and he goes down hard. And now in front, look at the effort by Niemi. He's got Taves at one side and was able to stretch out and make a, just a tremendous save with the right pad, but then Henrik on the doorstep gets it up and over. And he's got a body of Taves. Look at him in front. He's really struggling. A great save. Taves tries to get up and play it, but it's too late at that point. But that play was made in the neutral zone. An excellent effort by Daniel Sedin knocking that puck out of midair and creating a two-on-one. So the Canucks get one with 11 seconds to go in the first and another 32 seconds into the second period and have a 3-0 lead in Chicago. And now a penalty being called here. It's a tripping call 
And I'm not sure who it's going against. It's against Marion Hosa. It's a Chicago penalty, and Vancouver will get its first power play of the game. Well, from bad to worse, and for the Blackhawks, you, you think about game one against the Nashville Predators, a 4-1 loss on home ice, and they just seemed a bit off. See, in the middle of the ice, right in the Blackhawk at center ice, just a leg came out of Marion Hosa. So you talk about a momentum swing, Jim. We've seen so much in just under a minute. He was arguing that that was just incidental contact and there shouldn't have been a penalty, but Host is gone and the puck is gone out of the park here. And Joel Quinville, whose team lost in disappointing fashion in the first game of round one, is in trouble in the first game of round two. Yeah, they just don't seem to be able to impose their will on this game at all. And right now, this is just such an important power play for Vancouver to just continue to widen the gap and put the pressure on. The Sedin's right back on Henrik for Daniel in close quarters. Plays the puck back to Henrik. Samuelson. Pavel Dimitra from the point. Faked the shot. Salo tried to set him up for a shot. And a puck wobbled off Salo's stick and came outside the line. Here's Daniel Sedin. Michael Samuelson faked the shot. Patiently. Makes a nice pass. Sammy Sallow with a new stick. Fires a shot just wide of the net. Another chance for Sallow. Fakes and then he passes off. Henrik Sedin looking for Samuelson. He just kicked back into that quiet area. Sallow. Samuelson. Daniel Sedin in front and a pass intended for Sallow is intercepted. And Brent Sopel clears the puck. Barry Trotz, the coach of the Nashville Predators, said that if there was one player he could take off Chicago's penalty kill, it would be Brent Sopel. Such a good shot blocker. Here's Ryan Kessler. And a second power play unit, Christian Erhoff. Pavel Dimitra. Passes off. Down low, the play is to Erhoff. He shoots, and Niemi got across and made the save. The Sedin stay here with Ryan Kessler. Daniel looks for Christian Erhoff. Sedins have an amazing ability to stay out for a long time and make things happen a minute into a shift. Yeah, if you're looking for big saves, you just had it there from Monte Miami. That's a huge one on Erhard. Here they come again. Daniel from Henrik just couldn't tuck it in. Miami got his leg on that. The Sedins have been on for the full power play. It's almost a two-minute shift right now. Daniel passes in front. Kessler had his stick checked by Troy Brower. Daniel to Henrik. Christian Erhoff fakes the shot. Alexander Edler slap pass over to Henrik. Daniel gets to the puck. The penalty's over. Host is back on. Daniel Sedin takes the shot, deflected up over top of the net. And the Sedins just keep on ticking. Here's Daniel, his back pass, and Hosa picks it off and finally gets out. Edler fell down, and Christian Erhoff helped him out and recovered the puck. Finally, the Sedin shift ends as Ryan Kessler moves back in for Vancouver. There's a pass up the middle and a clearing attempt, and Sharp almost got away for Chicago. Three and a half minutes into the second period, the Sedins have played just about all of it for Vancouver. They're finally off. Up the board, there's a pinching Kevin Bieksa. Kept the puck in. Duncan Keith threw the puck away up the middle. Shane O'Brien to his partner Bieksa. Wide of the net. Alex Burrows on with... Mason Raymond and Ryan Kessler, a line that had six shots in the first period and accounted for two goals, and now Kessler's gone for Kyle Wellwood. The X is back. Patrick Sharp on him. The X managed to reverse the play. And it cannot get to center. Alex Burrows with the shooting. Jalmerson is back. Wellwood's right on it. There's Brian Campbell. Patrick Kane turned the puck over. Bernier with a shot, and Miami makes the save and has no idea where the puck is, so he doesn't want to move. Well, on home ice, you, you look for something to change the momentum in your team. And right Black now, Black the Black Chicago Blackhawks Black 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 have to Black look at that Black last Black penalty Black kill. Black as Antti Niemi does an excellent job of just curling that right pad back and making the save off the post. And that's one of those game breakers. I mean, the power play was going so well. This was earlier that a nice slide across by Antti Niemi and Jim right now for Joel Quenville. you got to find something to energize your team. You look at him behind the bench. He's trying to inspire his club. This is a flat building. You've got everything going into the matchup. Everybody expected this to be a rock raucous affair. Instead, the building is dead silent. But for Niemi, he's done his part to try to turn this around. Troy trying to get engaged in these playoffs and get some points. He's a bit like Alex Burrows. I mean, he was a good scorer in the regular season, but he hasn't been able to get on the board in the playoffs. Here's Andrew Ladd, another BC boy, and Roberto Luongo stopped him with his first save of this second period. And the lines have changed here. 
for Chicago, but in comes Steve Bernier with a centering pass for Vancouver. Patrick Kane now playing with David Boland and Andrew Ladd as Joel Quinville mixes things up. There's a centering pass by Ladd, hit a skate. He and Boland team up. Pat Kane to the point. Seabrook takes the shot, and that was blocked by the stick of Bernier. And the Canucks are able to get the puck out over the blue line, and that's a big deal in this second period with the benches a long ways away. Kessler line coming on for Vancouver. Chicago Seabrook dumped the puck in. Dustin Bufflin out with Brower and Madden now. John Madden along the board, stopped by Christian Ehrhoff. Keith keeps the puck in with a shot. Knocked down. Bufflin can't get to it. Now he does and got it away from Ryan Kessler. Dustin Bufflin nowhere near the net right now, out of the reach of Troy Brower. Seabrook pinched in and got the puck. Brower centering pass hit a skate, and Alex Burrows gets the puck and takes over. Mason Raymond is on his right. They're two on three, and Bufflin meets Burrows and knocks him down. And the fans who haven't had much to cheer about had a little bit of one there. Here's Duncan Keith. Fourth leading scorer amongst defensemen on the Blackhawks in the playoffs, and that's a rarity. There's a centering pass. Alberts couldn't get it. He was bumped off the puck. Kessler backing him up, took a shot. Blocked by Brent Seabrook. And Seabrook sends the puck down the ice, and this line for Chicago's been out for a while, and they'll have to stay, and Seabrook's been on even longer than the Madden line, and he'll have to stay as Vancouver changes on the ice and call. Yeah, they're dead tired right now. You talked about trying to do something physically. You haven't been able to get in the head of Roberto Luongo as Bufflin has been neutralized. At least try to create some energy. They get a break here. Brian Campbell said he broke his stick, so he took a while to get back across. And that buys himself a little time to get John Madden a rest. Henrik Sedin won the faceoff. And the Canucks have possession. Daniel looking for Henrik in front of the net. And Niemi blocked the pass. Keith was tripped up and lost the puck. And now the Canucks want to really tire this group out. Michael Samuelson lost the puck trying to make a pass. Bufflin gets the puck to center. Dumps it in and Chicago will get its much needed change. Henrik Sedin at center. Daniel tried to play the puck back. Brian Bickle got it. Back with Kane and Taves here. They reunite this line. Kane along the boards chasing the puck. And he tracked it down and holds it in for Chicago. Sopel turns and just dumped the puck into the end boards. Bickle, former Ottawa 67, working with Taves and Kane. The cycle is broken and Kane stole the puck back and tried to center for Taves. That was broken up. And the Canucks have a little trouble getting out of their own zone and finally get to center. Henrik Sedin. Now a backhand shot. Steered wide of the net. And the Blackhawks break out again. Jonathan Taves to center. Kane is sandwiched by Alberts and Wellwood. But he got the puck to Brian Bickle. Kane with a nifty move and then he accidentally passed the puck outside the blue line. Bickle at the end of his shift. Takes a hit from Andrew Alberts. Seabrook with a long shot wide of the net. Just off the bench is Patrick Sharp. In for Marion Hosa. Centering pass for Kopetsky was blocked. Deflected away from him. Here's Hosa. Can't make the puck settle down. He's lost it again. Pavel Dimitra took a hit, but he got the puck to center. Bernier to Bieksa. He takes the shot that Niemi stopped, and the rebound was cleared away from the on-rushing Canuck forward. Here's Brent Seabrook. Fakes the shot. Made a back pass that's picked off. Out in center, here's Dimitra. One man back was Duncan Keith, and Dimitra at the end of his shift just dumps the puck in. Well, that's a big play by Alberts there, staying aggressive and staying up on the line and creating that turnover. He was dead tired at the end of a long shift, and he didn't want to get caught with a cycle going on down low. Vancouver's fourth line comes on. Duncan Keith pressed into giving up the puck. But the Blackhawks get it back. Sharp just out of the reach of Kopetsky. And at center, Shane O'Brien for Vancouver dumps the puck back in. Keith to Seabrook. This pair has been together for the most part of three seasons. Seabrook and Keith. That's an eternity in the NHL these days. Christopher Stieg is number 32. Kopetsky's at the end of his shift, and he gets the puck to the end boards. Dave Bolin. Advanced it to Brian Campbell in off the blue line. Versteeg had a look around. Ladd jumps to the front of the net. There's the pass from Boland, and Ladd couldn't handle it. Yannick Hansen off the boards and out. You can really see the Blackhawks now getting their defense involved in the rush, getting their defense involved in the cycle, trying to create something offensively and create turnover. 
Boland with a hard shot off the boards, but Luongo could see it all the way. And he's able to stop it and hang on. Nine minutes into the second period. Vancouver.